Welcome to the AICPA Town Hall Series, your resource for the latest news and updates on pressing issues facing the accounting profession. Good afternoon and welcome to the AICPA Town Hall Series. This is a special edition. I'm Eric Auskerson, one of your hosts for today, and I'm with my good friend Tom Hood, who's one of the executives at the AICPA. It's great to be here with you, Eric. Excited. Today's special edition is going to be all about technology. We're here in New York and we just wrapped up our executive roundtable, which brought 40 of the leading companies. I'm going to be highlighting them in a moment on a slide that are really helping change the and transform the practice of finance and accounting. So let me just quickly highlight uh, what we will be covering. Tom and I are going to kick this off with some broad comments. Then we're going to do a deep dive with one of the great entrepreneurs who's supported us over the past 20 years in building out tax automation and outsourcing solutions, David Weil from Chore Prep. We're then going to talk a little bit about client advisory services, bringing in another technology partner. We're going to continue this discussion, have a discussion around crypto and digital assets. And then we're going to close out with a discussion around the audit and assurance area and what's happening there from a technology standpoint. So this is going to be a fast paced, full power hour, Tom. <laughs> and uh, let me, I'll highlight some of the presenters. Before we get going, there are a couple of uh, hot topics I just want to kind of d discuss with you. First, you know, our thoughts are with all of those being impacted by Hurricane Ian. In, in Florida, and we know that the storm is continuing. And we already have a number of questions, Tom, coming in related to extensions. And what we've already seen related to Hurricane Fiona, which went through Puerto Rico, is the IRS has extended deadlines yeah. there till February 15th. I think, Tom, right now, you know, the focus is on safety, uh, but there is the advocacy team is pushing uh, their DC counterparts there for extensions related to. Hurricane Ian. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the standard thing right now. It's it's definitely catastrophic, and first and foremost is the thoughts and prayers to all of you impacted uh, in that in the Florida area and the and the eye of that storm. But we are we are going to see. I'm sure they're going to be extending these things. So right now we're waiting and monitoring it. You'll get the state of the art probably next week. Ne on, ne on next week's town hall, we will be covering that uh, definitely in greater detail. This is a special edition, so we're not going to be doing. The DC update. One other breaking news item, though, that I will share uh, with the audience is that the Senate just passed the funding uh, of the government through, I think, December. We'll unpack that more next week. But what we're going to do now is we're going to, you know, set things up for this uh, discussion with these technology leaders. And what I'm showing on this slide here is CPA.com's, you know, basic strategy. This is our flywheel. And what I think about every day, I think about the firms, all the memberships, all of the membership, people in business and industry, but I also think about the technology ecosystem. And that's what we've been doing the last couple of days here in New York, meeting with these companies. And as I said earlier, these companies really are transforming uh, the practice of finance and accounting. They are spending billions of dollars in putting in place automation tools, enablement tools, for the firms to deliver, you know, state-of-the-art services to their clients, and they're also making an impact in uh, business and industry. Tom, yeah, yeah, th this is something you guys have done an amazing job with, Eric. Uh, the whole idea of assembling the ecosystem. We know technology is one of the biggest drivers in this profession, has been for years and years, but now we're in this exponential phase, right? So. The, the software, it's like the Cambrian explosion. Every year you do this session, there's more vendors, more, more products and solutions that are coming into this. And so you, by assembling this group, keeps them aware of what we're doing in the profession and it connects us to them so that we can maximize where they might be resources for all the members out there. So uh, I love what you're doing with this. Well, thanks, Tom. And, and here's a highlight of the companies that were with us the last two days. And what they really do help us with is they, they give us a market scan of what's going on. And I can tell you, you know, with what we've done related to client accounting services, 
what we're doing related to the audit product, how we're thinking about tax. These companies help inform us on where things are going. And one thing I would like to encourage all of our town hall attendees to do is, and you probably do, is to view them as partners. They're really not vendors. They're partners. They are committed to helping you deliver better services for your clients or your employers. This is a broader slide. That was a slide of just who was with us over the last couple of days. This truly is an eye chart, and it just represents uh, you know, what is happening related to innovation and technology enablement across all of the service lines uh, in the firm as well as in business and industry, Tom. And, and again, um, what, what I, I've loved about you guys doing this, putting it in categories, how many of these names represent what they actually do? I mean, they're, they're, the tech industry is very creative at how they label that. So you might have no idea what uh, Gusto does, for instance, or uh, Nexnia. Like, look at all those different. So by putting them in categories, now the other thing I've noticed, Eric, is that not only are the number of applications proliferating, but the categories themselves are proliferating. And then there are plenty of these that are like solutions like Intuit and some of those other ones, Walter's Clue, they cross multiple categories. So you have to be careful, but this is a way to help keep us aware of what you should be paying attention to. As this evolves, it's gonna be solutions that might help you serve your clients in a much better way. And so for those of you in business and industry, same idea, plenty of new apps, you can see in the BI and finance that are helping us all be better in our work as, as CPAs. And what we try to do, even they inform us of where they're going and we share with them what we're trying to accomplish for the profession. We also share with them some of our challenges. So it's a, it's a two way dialogue. Tom, we're going to keep things going here by just, I mean, Tom's providing tremendous leadership related to the future of finance. About 25% of the attendees in these town hall do work in, uh, in corporation, business yeah. and industry. Yeah, so this is this is our future of finance leadership advisory group. We started uh, talking to these folks about the trends and issues they're seeing. And then pretty soon we said, how about if we got a group together and you helped us look out and start to identify where the profession's going? Now, so we figured we'd start at the top and these large employers, and we're obviously cascading that and polling about what it means to the middle market and below. And, and the issues, by the way, are very common and very, very across the whole profession in corporate accounting. So we're going to be, you're going to see more about that as we uh, develop this, but they're doing some really good stuff in that arena. Yeah, some great, great insights there. So we're going to get into a hot topic for the town hall attendees, tax automation and outsourcing. And I'm thrilled uh, to bring into this discussion David Weil. Uh, so hopefully you'll see him on camera here in, in a second. Here he is, David. Welcome. Great to have you with us in New Great York. Great to be here. Thank you. And, it, and let me say that the town hall, uh, the uh, roundtable was the best one we've had. It was great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your contributions there. And David, just to kick things off a little bit about uh, yourself and, and your company, I'll just do a little setup yeah. for you. Before David uh, founded SurePrep in 2002, and David's team has processed, you know, million, helped support millions of tax returns, you actually founded uh, what is today CC Engagement. So that's that's pretty impressive. You've you've built two solutions that are that are key to the profession. But maybe a little bit about SurePrep, and I, I've been fortunate that you and I have known each other for almost 20 years now as well. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so I started in the profession. I was a CPA with Coopers and Librand. Uh, as you mentioned, I left there to start a paperless audit software. Uh, we called it ePACE Engagement. It's now CCH Pro System Engagement. And 20 years ago in July, we started SurePrep with the mission of automating tax preparation. And as you said, we've helped firms automate millions of returns. And our clients really uh, range from the big four to regional firms to small and local firms. Well, here, we'll, we'll, we'll t comment a little bit about the tax filing stats. What I want to do is just to help people understand what SurePrep is all about. Uh, we've got this, this, this slide, and then, and then we're gonna get into a little bit about you know, how, how automation is being done and, and the technology drivers behind that. But why don't you just take everybody through exactly what, what SurePrep does? 
Our goal is to automate the return really from cradle to grave, meaning starting with gathering documents from the taxpayer and ending with delivering a completed return to the taxpayer and automating everything in between and doing it with modern applications so that taxpayers can use mobile apps, take pictures of documents, sign things with their phone, and for CPAs to be able to also not have to key punch things, to be able to use OCR technology augmented by artificial intelligence to really eliminate the manual work that's traditionally involved in tax preparation so CPAs can focus on the more value-added aspects. Well, I mean, this is something that has truly driven efficiency in the profession over the past, definitely over the past decade. I mean, you started this 20 years ago. It was cl yeah. clearly at that time an early adopting phase. But you know what has what, with what the technology of OCR and the amount of time that is saved in in getting the information into the tax prep software. Yeah. So you know OCR is uh, is great. The only drawback about OCR is that it's not perfect. And so one thing that I think most people can relate to is if you OCR a contract, there's going to be some spelling errors. You're going to have to correct it. So it's not perfect. It's faster than typing it from scratch. And if you typed it from scratch, you'd make errors too. So it's better to OCR it. So we've been OCRing things for you know a long time, uh, you know two decades now. But with AI technology, we're now able to to take that one thing about OCR that's not perfect, which is that you know there's some errors, and actually make it perfect. Actually reduce the errors to where this this uh, <clears throat> blue area that you see here is are documents that are 100% accurate without any human intervention. And then the green section are the area that we're still looking to make smaller and smaller by automating completely. But AI technology is allowing us to literally make it a zero touch process with 100% accuracy. And so this is a key part of your tax caddy service, gathering all of that information from the uh, client, you know, to do the, the return? Taxpayer. Yes. And, and one of the things that is a big plus when a taxpayer uses something like TaxCaddy is that the documents you get tend to be native PDFs. They're not scanning their brokerage statement. They're downloading it from right. Charles Schwab or E-Trade right. and they're uploading it. And so you end up with high quality documents that can be OCR'd with perfection and eliminating all the manual work otherwise involved in entering data from those types of documents. We like this. We you know it's a live show. We just got a comment saying we've been using this for 15 years, and and sure, perhaps OCR technology is more reliable than than accountants <laughs> typing the data. <laughs> I, I, you know, we're always honest with you, and I think this what we're trying to uh, you know share with the town hall attendees here is the a little bit about the technology and the power of this technology. This is like the next. So let's let's talk about where things are going. So. Everyone knows you, you've had, you've had, you've had, we've had OCR technology for quite a while. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're doing here. This is kind of AI based here, this auto categorization, right? right. Yeah. So there's actually several things we're doing with AI, and this is one of them, uh, auto categorization of documents. And what this means is that um, in the old days, taxpayers would fill out an organizer and Truth be told, they didn't fill it out because it was too much work. They didn't like to do it. Mm -hmm. With Tax Caddy, we said, we're going to make it easier for them. You take a picture of your W-2 and you scroll through a list of documents and tap it's a W-2. What are we finding out now? Taxpayers don't even want to just tap that it's a W-2. They just want to take the picture of the document and be done with it. Mm -hmm. And AI technology is allowing that to happen. We're going to be releasing next year the ability for taxpayers to do just that, to just drag and drop a file into a virtual shoebox or take a picture and do nothing else and that document will get identified, it'll get categorized, matched to the document request list, so the CPA knows what's been received, what's still coming, all automated. Here's a question for you, great question. Um, with an increase in need for data security, what enhancements are in place to ensure that client data is secure you know, with the use of electronic transmission? That's a great question. And one of the things that we're doing now is we're uh, engaged in a project that we will be uh, completing this coming year, and we call it database sharding. That's that's what we're calling it. But what it means is that it, rather than having one database for all clients, each client can have their own database, and so that we can have a unique encryption key for every single client database, so that there's no honeypot. So that you know, if God forbid uh, a database is hacked, it is one and not all clients. It's, there's no honeypot there. Yeah, I like that. I mean, that's 
That's the right way. Now, let me ask this question. Are you noticing that with the with kind of increasing pace of processing power, storage, all the right, the exponential trends, is that exponentially giving you new features every year that you'll be able to continue to enhance this product like you're doing with AI machine learning on this? That is hugely important. So the ability for companies like SurePrep to use cloud computing where the application scales automatically into the cloud, especially for a business like we're in, which is so seasonal and has these extreme peaks that come suddenly, it's a, it's really a game changer for our industry having this kind of auto scaling cloud technology. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's why that this executive roundtable is so important because every year those technologies get literally like doubly more mm -hmm. powerful, new features and new categories. So yeah, this is cool. Well, we, I've got a question for you related to outsourcing and kind of, you know, additional support uh, for these firms that are just overwhelmed, you know, with talent issues and, and, and workload. But before we go there, one more question just related to one of the big pain points of just gathering the tax prepare documents. I mean, you're supporting millions of returns right now. What do you see? technology's role is in, in helping get that task done and not in getting it done before like April 14th. <laughs> right. So uh, the way that we look at it is that technology should make everything easier for everyone in the process. So whether that's the taxpayer that can now just take pictures of documents or, or drop them into a box and they don't have to fill anything out. Having no those, organizers. They no you, you organizers. do away with the organizers. And what that means is that the CPAs get the documents earlier because people always delayed filling out the organizer because they right. didn't want to do it. So now CPAs can get it earlier. No uploading and downloading documents between system. You're either using a fully integrated process like SurePrep or because APIs are so huge right now, we have clients that will, maybe they have their own portal on the front end, an accounting firm that has their own portal, but it still flows right into 1040 scan automatically, no uploading and downloading between systems because of APIs. So, you know, the future is really uh, automating everything through AI so that people don't need to do things, but also connecting applications even from different companies mm -hmm. through APIs so that you truly have a streamlined workflow. Well, thanks. And I mean, this is something we might, I'm sure, have a follow up session on as we get closer to the to, to the filing season. But a question that came up a lot of uh, this past tax filing season was related to outsourcing support and, you know, meeting your you know workload demand. So this is something that Sure Prep does. So give us a little bit of background on how you see this. Right. So at SurePrep, we provide a platform that you can use to prepare all of your 1040 and 1041 returns. And you can pick how much automation you want on each return. They don't all have to use the same service level. The biggest service level where you get a complete return where there's no work left to do, we call that outsource. That's where a human goes and does what a computer can't and actually finishes the return. And so what we like to look at delivering outcomes, if the outcome you want is a complete return, we will give you a complete return, but we are going to try to automate as much of that as we can and minimize the human element. But there will probably always need to be a human element because that's what we do, right? We're CPAs. And uh, so we can bridge that gap to help firms get over the hump of busy season for some percentage of the returns using the outsourced service. Tom, I mean, we, we've been trying to do the, you know, extend the tax cycle and, and make it more spread out. And we just can't get that through Congress. Right. So the next best thing is what you're doing, which is simplifying and speeding up the ca caption of documents and getting them inputted and then outsourcing in the event you have to get through those surges because we can't we can't get them to move those deadlines because there's a major cash impact on the federal and state government. So that's where we've had that challenge. We've been that's working right. on that for uh, like 20 years. So this has been a great discussion. There are, you know, questions coming in related to client consents related to outsourcing. So maybe, maybe just that that's been a topic that we've been addressing for 10 plus years. Sure. So, uh, there's an, uh, uh, an IRS code section 7216 that requires you to get consent, mm. written consent, mm. if you're going to be using an offshore preparer. So, Companies like SurePrep, we offer onshore and offshore outsourcing options. Onshore, you don't need to get the consent. Right. Offshore, you do. Here's the th thing that is I found most interesting about that. The biggest firms with the highest billing rates are comfortable asking for the consent, and they do everything offshore. 
and the smaller firms aren't comfortable asking for it because they're afraid of what their clients will think. I have yet to find a CPA firm that said that they had a negative client reaction that cost them a client. And so the smaller firms that you know, have lower billing rates should really be utilizing this offshore, getting the yeah. 7216 consent signed, letting their customers know that the reason why they're doing it is so that they can keep their prices reasonable and focus on value added parts of the return. And meet the deadlines. And meet the deadlines. And in yeah. a focus, we talked about it just recently here at the, uh, at the round table, tax planning, advisory services. So there's other things that, that you're focusing on mm -hmm. and you're getting the return done in a high quality way. So Hey, David, it's been great having you here Thank you uh, very in New much. York. Thank you very much. Look forward to having you back on uh, the town hall. And we just, we should be thankful. You know, an entrepreneur, he, you know, uh, worked in a firm, started, uh, you know, one, one, one business is the, C, the, the foundation of CCA, CCH engagement, and now built a real successful business with Share Prep. So thanks. Thank you, Eric. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. It's been great being with you. Thank you. So now we are going to pivot and talk about Tom, one of the highest growth areas in the profession. So we're going to talk about client accounting services. What we're highlighting here uh, is the top 100 report issued this year from Accounting Today. And here's a quote from Dan Hood, who's the editor there. No service offering in the past 40 years of the profession has seen growth like we've seen in the client accounting services space. And this is you know, outsourced accounting services. This is providing the cloud accounting, cloud bill payment and cloud payroll for your client, running the back office for your client. This is now, per, per this chart, the number one growth niche area for the top 100 firms. And I can tell you, this is a huge growth area for firms of all sizes. So we're gonna be talking about this expanding ecosystem and we're going to talk about a new tool that's being, you know, new capability, I should say, that's being brought into the marketplace. But Tom, just a little bit of your thoughts related to the CAS category. Yeah, I think, Eric, I mean, I feel like what CPA.com has done here is really established this category and professionalized it. And uh, and in fact, it is the fastest growing. And, and what you're seeing is that, you know, the average small mid-sized business, they can't keep up and they want to dedicate all their talent to running the actual business. They don't want to. They don't want to do accounting if they don't have to. So outsourcing it to a trusted firm is a major way to do it. On top of it, think about the talent challenge. Most of these small businesses can't compete with CPA firms and larger corporates in that talent pool. So they're losing or they're getting the bottom of the barrel, and they really need to sharpen that up because they need that financial information, especially in this period of inflation and recession, right? It's now making yeah. more and more need for pro projections and forecasting. So it's, yeah, well, it's well good category. Well said, Tom. And I'll, this is one thing we, we had great discussions related to this category of the past couple of days with these technology companies. And I think in five years, maybe shorter time frame, businesses will all ask themselves, just like they ask themselves today, should I outsource my payroll? should I outsource my accounting services? So that's what's happening. This is going to become very, very mainstream in the small businesses decision set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring uh, Tyler uh, Hogue up from, uh, who's our partner uh, from uh, from Bill.com and Divi. Wel welcome, Tyler. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Tom and Eric. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good and Tyler you. was with us in, in, in New York and he for the last day and a half and he flew home a little bit early so that's the power of virtual we've got him virtually with us so it's good to be with you tyler the last couple of days and and what we're going to talk about is a emerging area related to what we call pre-accounting the audit you know automating of the inputs and we're going to dig into a category called spend management which is really beginning to uh, innovate and lead to a, a, a future where you don't even need to do a, expense reports. So let's stay with us here. Um, and we're going to explain to you, you know, what's happening here with this category. So Tyler, I'll let you kick it off and talk a little bit about this legacy expense management input process with employees and where modern spend management's going. And one thing to think about this could be used in a cash practice, but if you're in business and industry, 
This could just be leverage yeah. in your corporation. Sure. Happy to, to share a couple of thoughts. I think it fits nicely in with what you were saying earlier of these new categories being formed, Tom. This new category, spend management, before I kind of share how I define it or I, how I view it, it's probably worth explaining how it used to work or legacy expense management. So let's walk through that in just 20 seconds or so. The vast majority of businesses today are still underneath this legacy expense management process where you essentially issue corporate cards, but not to everybody in the company, just a small percentage of them. And then the rest of the company typically uses a personal card for T&E expenses and then asks for reimbursement through either a homegrown process or maybe a third party vendor that you've purchased to use. And there's a couple problems with that that we can talk about in more depth if you want, but that's in contrast with modern spend management where you actually tie the corporate card and the expense management together into one platform. And the way that, that the way that shows itself is you can now issue cards to the every employee in the company and they're using a corporate card to spend. And so when they swipe, the AI, the machine learning can actually auto categorize those transactions for them, swipe to books and they'll close their accounting books at month end and now you don't have to do expense reports anymore. So this new category, spend management, I think is pretty simply defined as the new way that businesses are managing their overall spend, both T&E spend as well as call it vendor spend. Well, th thanks, Tyler. Let's We're going to break down the pain a little bit further. But with the audience here, I just want to reflect on uh, a a solution that we brought out about a, de about a decade ago, and that was a bill payment solution actually with the parent company of Divi, bill.com. And I remember being here in New York and talking about how firms were managing okay. bill payment for their clients. And they were just writing, you know, they were writing checks and very inefficient. And here we are today, you know, in 2022, and everyone's very familiar with the automation of bill payment and the power of using workflow and a bill payment solution to manage that that service for your clients. I think we're going to see this is a similar shift here in spend management where, you know, historically everyone takes their credit cards out, they spend they they go out there and they they make purchases and then they on the back end they put expense reports in. In this new way, you're issuing the cards as Tyler stated and you don't need to do expense reports. You really don't because you're you're authorizing the spend there. And then you can have your controller or you can have the firm in the in who's running the cast practice kind of do some quick audit checks. Uh, we've had a we did a, a webinar with Steve Cheney, one of the leading client accounting service firm providers in, in the US. And he focuses on churches and he's been rolling out this spend management capability. So this is a category that is, is new. It's going to take some learning um, for firms to get their arms around it. Uh, but I think it's exciting. And I think we're going to look back on this like we look back on uh, Bill Payment and Bill.com. But Tyler, why don't you take us through th these pain points in, in a little bit uh, greater detail? Yeah, happy to. So we talked about kind of the legacy expense management and issuing cards to just a small portion of your employee base. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is there's kind of two big problems. One is you don't have visibility and you don't have control. And I'll talk about both of those just very briefly. In the old way, the legacy way, you don't have visibility because you don't actually know what's being spent by your employees until 30 or 60 days later when the expense report comes through. So the visibility is all backwards looking. And so that, that's problem number one. Problem number two is control. Well, how do you actually pre-approve how much someone should be able to spend and, and, and not make it be the case that they spend and then ask for forgiveness afterwards? You don't have control in that world. And so the way that, that this new spend management category has kind of evolved is it solves both of those problems by tying the card and the software together. You issue these cards to employees, but you can actually issue them with zero-based budgets. So there is total control over what every employee spends. An intern might have to request funds in order to go purchase a coffee, whereas the CEO has total control over how much he or she wants to spend on the credit line. Uh, and then the visibility is real time. So you know anyone who's using one of these spend management platforms has the ability to see what's being spent 
on a dashboard live as soon as the swipe occurs, whether that's a virtual card or a physical card. And so the way businesses are adopting this is they're essentially creating one virtual card for every vendor. Those vendors only have access to that one card. That card will have control over how much that vendor can charge them. So now the vendor can't overcharge them. It's also more secure because now you're not sharing cards across employees. And then the, the visibility is as soon as that card is swiped again, virtually or physically, you've got dashboards and analytics to show you how much everyone's spending on different trips over different time periods and on different vendors. Well, Tyler, I mean, we've got questions coming in. I mean, it's, this is an exciting, you know, I think new capability and it's, it's some way it's, it's transforming how you think about what, how you're managing your employees. And here's an employee question. They, they, they said, you know, a few years back, they, they had a base of employees. There was some dishonesty is what the, what the, the question said, you know, with the way they were, they were using uh, company cards. So I think you covered, you know, the intelligence in this platform and how you'd, you'd manage that, but I'll let you, you comment on that question. Yeah, I think it's a great question. And I do think this, this new era of visibility and control minimizes that risk. And, and like I said, it's because now the software has control over the, the credit card, both physical and virtual. And the admin or the VP of finance can, can, can control the funds that every individual has in the company. Uh, and, and hopefully that prevents them from, you know, overspending or going rogue. The other benefit is if someone does go rogue within, you know, two or three clicks, the spend management platforms allow you to turn off a card and spin up a new virtual card. And so it just, it, whenever you lower friction to adoption, this is, this is what you see now. There are dozens and dozens of virtual cards in most businesses that are adopting this, this uh, protocol. Tom, so I'll let you have the final, final question or word in here because you're, when you think about all the, the CFOs and controllers you're looking yeah. to support in your role. I mean, so the fact that it's real time, Tyler, I really like that idea because that means you're on the point of when it's spent to the time to analyze it, look at it on the dashboard. You're not waiting 30 days or how many people end up saying, you know, I'm too busy. They don't follow it in 30. They fought. So the CFO and controller is trying to figure out how to close the books. And there's big expense reports out. That's, right. That's a big frustration. I think on the employee side, what, how much productivity is there when you don't have to file those expense reports? That's right. If it's already being coded and you're just reviewing it, I think it's it's a double sided thing that's you know got a big win for those uh, businesses or the client accounting practices as well. So, kudos. And there's a lot of more technical, a lot many many more technical questions coming in. And today, what we're doing today, this is this is the power hour. We're hitting a lot of different. Uh, cat you know service lines of the firm with these different technology capabilities so this is all the time we're going to spend here on the cast category and talking about spend management but we will highlight at the end of today's town hall a one hour segment that we'll be doing just on the spend management category if you want additional information so tyler great having you with us today um th thanks for your partnership and for you know driving this new capability out to the firms and and, and cpas Thanks to you both. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, so now, you know, stay with us. Stay <laughs> with us uh, because we last town hall, and this is a special edition town hall. I mean, we've got some questions coming in. We, we let you know this is going to be a special edition a town hall focused on technology and, and, and bringing some of these technology leaders to, to our town hall to talk about what they're doing. Next week, we'll get back into technical updates. But what we're going to talk about now is something we did discuss on the last town hall, and that was about crypto and digital assets. And we're fortunate to have with us the CFO of Luca, uh, King, uh, Kinga Bossi. And Luca is truly one of the leading companies in this space, and they're, they're a partner of the AICPA and, and CPA.com. So we appreciate your partnership. And what we're going to do here is you know kick things off um, with this history of crypto slide, uh, which you do an excellent job of uh, clearing. So so welcome, great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so to start with the history of crypto and generally just the notion of crypto, um, everybody when when you're looking at the the industry, people define crypto as an asset class. And what we what I'd like to start with is that. Crypto is, is really a technology, blockchain technology to enable commerce. And, and when you put that into perspective, it will make a lot more sense why we're going through the hassle to understand it and, 
and adapt it. So as you can see, you know, the, the Satoshi paper in 2008 started this whole evolution with the Bitcoin paper, the infamous Bitcoin paper. We still don't know who Satoshi is. We're trying to guess who it is. So it has a very interesting background for that. But as you can see over the years, and it's a very short period of time, it proliferated into a, a, an exuberant ecosystem with a number of different applications and over 17,000 assets. Now, if you go to our uh, complex ecosystem, you actually see that, that there is over 100,000 different kinds of assets that are out there and people are trading it on, on centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges. They're coming up with different types of use cases. And it is truly becoming a, a prevalent digital way of conducting business and, and owning your data and, and have a better, more transparent um, system where you can actually um, in real time follow every facets of your of your digital footprint. So you can see that as of today, you know we have many many different types of interactions with the industry. Regulators, standard setters are stepping in, so it's creating an environment for you all to be able to participate in a responsible manner. So to be, you know, when you're when you're first um, encounter the industry, you don't really know what to do with it. You want to have a, a safety around what you can do and understand where the reg regulators are, where standard setters are, how can you do reporting, disclosures, how do you accounting? Yeah, well, that this, this slide just kind of, I think, shows the evolution of where we're at. When I look at this and I see on the, the right-hand side, you know, the White House issuing guidance on crypto, you know, the, the increased activity by the U.S. Treasury Department, increased activity by the SEC and obviously the proliferation of, uh, you know, these different crypto asset classes. So this is something that we're all very familiar with, um, uh, you know, Bitcoin and, and the ownership. Um, so give us a little bit of, uh, of a breakdown of like where the owners are and where where's actually a lot of the, the trade, the trade action occurring. Right. So uh, despite the fact that I just said that there's an incredible proliferation in assets, the market is still predominantly retail. And, and CPAs as well, as, as everyone who's involved in the industry needs to understand that, that your customers are retail customers with small accounts uh, mainly, and they want to understand the ecosystem, experiment with it. So they, they may have small accounts, but a lot of different things on it, right? And institutions are about 8% of the system. They are the ones who bring in the rigor around accounting and other standards so that people can participate and, and understand really the, and, and get the transparency and customer protection and everything you need that you're used to in the traditional ecosystem. So that's what I would really be careful with is when supporting clients, trying to understand what they are dealing with, trying to understand what they're going through when they're, they want to participate. Because as you said, as, I, as I'm saying, you have almost a trillion dollars of this. There's a lot of money spread across a lot of the different smaller accounts. Well, let's talk about, you know, what Luke is doing to help with understanding, you know, what the fair market value of yeah. the proliferation of these different crypto assets is. And I think this is pretty exciting so that you are now supporting both Bloomberg and the S&P with some of the you know information and indexes that that they're putting out there based on you know the the, the capabilities here of, of 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 your platform right and the right hand side shows luca's tracking coverage if you if you will that is uh that that is how far we got this is this is, this is the predominant institutional retail players books um there's over a hundred thousand crypto assets we're tracking um, there's, there's even more that's out there, but this is really the majority of the clients who are, who are, who are using Luca. Um, we have about 41,000 unique crypto pairs, trading pairs. Obviously people are not trading just fiat against crypto, crypto against crypto. So everything goes here. And then you have crypto derivatives that there are new, um, new emerging sector, obviously without derivatives and hedging, you don't really have a well-functioning commercial market. So, um, the, the reason why you need so many, right, is is I, I would look at crypto as an experimentation. As I said, it's it's all facets of com commerce. But what's interesting about it and what's 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 also challenging is that um, there are the, the the ecosystem is 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 very different from what we used to. We used to 
close dates of 5.30, where you know, all our accounting is around that. But these exchanges are open 24-7. That's, that's the benefit, but it's also an issue, right? When you have to monitor something 24 seven, there's no standardization. There's unsupervised exchanges across the globe. You can access them from pretty much wherever you are, even though the regulators are trying to tell you not to, but people get around these things. But the reality there is that when you don't have a standardized ticker system, you don't have files that are the same, you don't have valuation processes and pricing processes, you have an incredible data management problem that you have to go through on a daily basis as an accountant or a CPA or whoever wants to make sense out of all that. Um, the other thing is that, that, which is also to me the most interesting part about crypto and, and is that it enables you to, to trade in extreme um, extreme fractional quantities. That That is the the single most ad advanti ad advance that, that we made in technology is that we can bring wealth management to the crowds. That's why you can see 92% of the retail. You can have a dollar and make $2 out of it, which may not mean a lot in the United States, but it could mean a lot in an emerging economy where, where people are on bank. So, so all these things that, that makes it interesting to watch is also making it extremely complex. So that's what Luca does really is trying to create an environment where where we, we we give you the backbones that allows you to do reporting and and pay your taxes and and figure out a way how to to make disclosures that meets any sort of compliance regulatory requirements. Well, here let's just to to wrap things up. Let's look at how you are. There was a question that comes in that came in related to how how you're doing the fair value calculation so so we can close with this and then we're going to move on to a an audit segment right uh, and fair value calculation this is the this is the page that describes actually our methodology as you can see you have a number of exchanges we we have our own methodology a, a white paper that we created that that meets both FASB and IFRS standards based on ESA 20. the the idea there is that you need to find a principal market with a traded uh, price, right? So we were collecting all information of all markets and we, we identify based on metrics like volume and and uh, and DK and all sorts of other metrics around, you know, whether the exchange is, is a reputable exchange to accept prices to meet all the ESC 20 standards. We collate all that information in that big blue box, we're not a black box, we're a blue box, where we're creating a, a pricing on a tick by tick basis by by creating what the dominant exchange is. What you need to understand is that there's not just one dominant exchange and the exchanges changes even within a day. So the, your primary market could be Coinbase today, Kraken tomorrow. So you need to have the, the technology and the pricing methodology that enables you to really identify what, what your principal market is and price your, your book and value yourself against that. Well, what you're doing is rather impressive. Uh, you know, thank you for kind of helping, you know, put together these capabilities, which are needed, needed by the firms, needed by companies, uh, the regulators. I, we, I can tell you that the regulators are looking at trying to understand, OK, what is the What is the fair value of these of these uh, instruments that are traded on multiple exchanges? And that that includes the IRS. So we look forward to kind of continuing this discussion. This is a hard one. Uh, understanding, you know, crypto, Tom, and and uh, yeah, <laughs> digital assets is not easy. And that's again how I opened. These companies are our partners, and they're helping us on this journey. I mean, that's the that's what I like about what you guys are doing with this ecosystem because you're bringing these folks in right. so that we can learn together and and help stay ahead of some of this stuff because it's evolving as you can see at an exponential pace, and it's just mind boggling. Yeah. So thank you for being part of this. Yeah, um, I thank you as well. Thank you very much. So, and we've got, here's a list of resources, um, all kinds of tools that the AICPA and CPA.com have put out related uh, to digital assets and, and blockchain. So Tom, we're now gonna uh, move on to our final segment of the day. This is a power hour. Um, uh, it's a special edition power hour. And we're going to be talking about uh, the evolution in audit and assurance. And we're gonna be doing this with somebody uh, that I think many here in the town hall community know, J Jim Bork. One of the best, it's always great to have Jim on here. What a way to close out this power hour. And Jim, before, hey, welcome here. We've got Jim in the studio. Jim's been with us here in, in, in New York. Um, so we can do a wide shot here. 
There you are. Welcome, Jim. Great right. to have you. Happy to be here, guys. So Super happy. I'll have you just give a, you know, a little bit of, of your background. But when you do that, also, to, we've got questions coming in here. And, you know, you've, we've got a wide range of firms here. And I want you to also talk about how you see these, these solution uh, providers. Yep. No, absolutely. I just, so a little bit about me. I'm a uh, partner with them. I head up advisory today, managing director for advisory services. I think I spend most of my life on airplanes, traveling around the globe, talking about technology, talking about advisory, talking about all these cool technologies, best of breed stuff that we've seen really appearing in our profession over the last couple of years, Eric. It's been great. Absolutely great. And t t today? The and, the and how are these solution providers? How do you, how does Witham look at them? Uh, and, you know, and I, as I opened up, I said they're yeah. transforming the practice of finance and accounting along with the firms. Oh, absolutely. Totally. I mean, look, we, we, we believe that our technology stack is totally driving our practice today, right. whether it's audit, whether it's tax, whether it's advisory. And, uh, you know, so we, we look for these best of breed technologies all around the globe. I often say technology is this global language, Eric, that, that literally we speak the same language, the technologies and audit that apply in the UK, that apply in, let's say, Australia someplace, they apply right here in North America. And it's what we're trying stuff. to do, and do you learn a lot? You learn a lot when you're in these sessions, just hearing their updates oh, and where they're going? Let me tell you, I, I've met, you know, it's funny, I, I, I go through the roundtables, I look at the brochure, I look at the, the, the companies that are here. Some of these guys represent the best of breed technologies that we have in a profession for every single aspect of what we do in our practice today. Okay, well, let, we're going to have you help us unpack, you know, what's going on here with audit technology, assurance technology. So I'll let you clear uh, this slide here. Oh, sounds good. So, so this slide here, we talk about data. Data is at the center of every single audit today. When we do brainstorming requirement on, on every single audit, you know, you brainstorm. You talk about what you did last year. You talk about what you're going to do this year. We talk about changing it up data today and how data uh, uh, data applies to the audit, what we do with data, how we visualize data, how we touch the data, how we ingest the data, all of that impacts everything that we are doing uh, in the audit today. So that is, guys, that's a huge, huge focus in, in the audit practice today. Well, let's kind of talk about, you know, how, where, where are we going here from this, you know, static to rather dynamic environment? Yeah. So we, we talk about this, you know, how do we go from navigation from static to dynamic? Think about this. Think about the garments that we all had, that we all had. Hopefully none of you guys have garments that today. Maybe you do, <laughs> but I don't know, but you're utilizing apps today, right? We're utilizing ways. We're utilizing uh, all types of new technology. Why? It's our eyes in the sky. It's we're looking ahead. We're looking at and what's happening out there. So it's not static. It's not going from point A to point B. It is going from point A to point B, but knowing what is happening throughout that entire journey. And, you know, today, Eric, is a, you know, super special day uh, for, uh, for, for us in the profession because we have the Dynamic Audit Solution. Dynamic Audit Solution release number two is out today. And, uh, you know, that's what I look at. When I, when I talk about differentiation mm -hmm. and transformation of the technology impacting our profession, Dynamic audit solution is just that. So when you think of that, that analogy, you look at going from static, going to dynamic, going from doing things the old fashioned way to going to doing things the new way, taking advantage of technologies that exist today. And you know what? Taking advantage of technologies that are going to exist tomorrow. Well, Jim, now I want to get into transformation. That was a great kind of uh, setup here for what really technology enablement is all about, because it's about thinking on how you're going to do things differently. Like we, we talked just earlier today about, you know, tax automation. I know how passionate you are on that. Mm -hmm. And we, then mm -hmm. we also talked about a new service capability related to accounting services. And you need to look at this technology and then rethink how you're operating. And that's kind of what this slide is here. When you think about audit transformation, you think about the data-driven audit. It's really, about, there's a lot of change in there. Oh, massive amount of change. Think about yeah. how we used to do audits yesterday, right? It was always Sally, same as last year. We always looked at what we did last year. Maybe we looked at it. How can we improve it a little bit over last year? But it was always, that was always the starting point. What do we do? We pretty much threw that away. And we look at, really, you look at those four boxes on there. You look at, you look, you look at the cloud. So, uh, you know, thankful, a lot of the profession has migrated to the cloud. You know, we look at, at, at utilizing cloud-based solutions today. That's at our core. That's how we collaborate much better with our clients. Then connecting stronger connections into so many different data points on the, on the audit today. And then new methodology. Mm -hmm. That is what's really, really key about, about taking audit to the next level. You know, I look at the dynamic audit solution, new methodology built from the, crown, the ground up by accountants, for accountants, in the cloud, built for the cloud. You know, we look at all these things. And, and bottom line, 
transformative, totally transformative. We look at we look at all of those things from AI, we look at blockchain, we look at all the technologies, like I said before, that exist today and that, you know, the technologies that will impact our profession in the future, that we don't know how they're going to impact it in the future today, that we built this solution, allowing for greater flexibility of embracing all of these things and change as it happens. Well, I mean, Jim, I appreciate you kind of teeing up, you know, what we're doing here with the, the dynamic audit solution. And just for those of you who don't know about this, what this is, it's a, a collaborative effort between the AICPA, CPA.com, a group of firms to really transform how the audit is done, leveraging the state-of-the-art uh, technology capabilities. Our technology partner is Caseware. And with any you know big technology initiative, you really do need to rethink how you are operating. And when you think about the audit, Jim, it's about the methodology. And we've rethought on how the methodology uh, should be done based on these transformative capabilities. And you've got some of the, you know, different concepts here, contextual content, guided approach, you know, data-driven. Absolutely. Cloud-based, collaborative, yeah. integrated, right? Data, going out, grabbing that data, ingesting the data, seamlessly doing that. Think one word. So if you hear DAS solution out there in the marketplace, you're going to be hearing a lot more of it in the marketplace. Think transformative. That's all you have to know is that, Look, I want to transform my audit from how I did it yesterday to how I plan to do it in the future. And that's, to be honest with you, that's what DAS is all about, how to be transformative in that audit space and literally take advantage of that massive amount of data that sits at our clients and look at it totally differently and how it interacts with your, uh, with your audit solution. Well, I mean, it's an exciting time. I mean, you can just feel the energy here in this hour. I mean, we're trying to bottle what we just went through, Tom, over the last couple of days here. It's an exciting time. I mean, billions of dollars is being pumped in to enable uh, the, these different services. Uh, your kind of perspective is you hear, you know, Jim so passionate to describe. <laughs> That's why I love where, where, things, where things are going. But we're lucky to have a guy like him helping to, to lead this thing. So the, the quote that I'm reminded of, Jim, as you talk through that is the difference between change and transformation, right? Yes. So change is doing things differently, like tweaking things to kind of improve them. Transformation is doing different things. Absolutely. And I hear what you guys are doing, which I love, is you're transforming based on where you know the technology is going, not where it is today. And that means you're leaping ahead a bit and being able to keep pivoting as new technology keeps coming, which we've been watching this whole power hour. Absolutely, Tommy. It's funny. You're using that quote that you that you, you said. Before. I used that same quote. I give you credit for that quote in the last presentation that I just did, <laughs> because that's what it's all about. Change leading to transformation in the whole lot of process. Yeah. Well, we're going to pivot here. And this is going to be, I know, you're staying with us here, town hall attendees. It's the final kind of category <laughs> topic of the day. But I promised Jim that we would uh, yes. just, this is one of his passion points. It's in the assurance area. So this is what we're talking about. Yeah, so it's really cool. It's in the assurance area, right? As auditors, we own this space. Just like we own the audit today, we own the SOC space. Years ago, it was the Wild West. Everyone was doing SAS 70 reports. Today, we own it. Got to be a CPA right in the space. All different flavors, not going to get into lots of details. There's lots of other events to do that. SOC 1, SOC 2, SOC 3, SOC for cyber, SOC for supply chain. You name it, it's a space that we own. To tell you the truth, you know, we talk about technologies. I told the roundtable uh, uh, group that was here uh, with us uh, last couple of days. I basically said, you know, if I was a CPA firm and I was choosing a technology vendor and I knew our clients, our clients' data was going to sit on their systems, I would not choose a vendor today that has not gone through that SOC 2 process. That to me, that is so important because that's us as a profession basically giving the stamp of approval on that company that they've mess, met best practices around protecting data. So uh, this is a huge space. We own it and, uh, you know, so happy that it is literally exponentially growing throughout the entire profession. Thanks, Jim. And I, if we've got, we might have some issues here on that chart. So I apologize for that. Just let's move here into, into open forum. We've got a couple of minutes. You know, what, one question, you know, we with, with times in town halls, we do technical updates and they're saying, hey, you know, I, uh, Jim, question for you. You know, mm -hmm. I have to I'm trying to stay up on all the tax technical updates. You know, what's what's happening with 
know, business relief. I don't even have time uh, for for some of these these technology solutions. You you Eric, you have to make time, right? How do you make time for these? Look, we, the AICPA runs, my opinion, two of the best conferences for our industry. Look, no 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 slight against any of the other conferences that are out there, but the Engage Conference that's going to be held next June, and our and you you all now have the opportunity to sign up for a digital CPA that's right around the corner. Two of the best conferences that we have in a profession allow you to stay plugged in. So if you want to immerse yourself in technology, all the technology is impacting our profession, make it a point to just be out, be there, be live at our conference, either in Austin at uh, for uh, CPA Digital or in Vegas for uh, for Engage. But yeah. Jim, just talk, I mean, Tom, you can jump in here, but if you talk about, you look at, we were talking about tax automation, these solutions can save, save time so you can spend more time on you know, getting getting your arms around some of the technical updates, and a lot of these solutions that we that we, that we're talking about um, help you understand all of the technical updates. You look at our DAS solution, the guided approach. It's going to really help you, you know, follow the standard. Oh, absolutely! Look, let's automate all those manual tasks, and that's right. what these technologies are doing, right? All that stuff that you didn't go to school to learn how to do, let technology do that. Take that away from you and spend your time improving audit quality, improving the quality of your tax delivery, looking for additional advisory services to be able to help your clients reach the next level. Let technology take care of all of those manual tasks. So well, Tom, same question to you. I mean, that's what, so talking about the, the tax application today, right? Mm -hmm. If you start to do that and save some time in that space across your firm, you reinvest that time in looking at those newer harder service. That's what we heard from our future finance group today, that they said, let's start with basic standardizing things, systemizing things, and automating things, the little things. Free up time, then invest that time in that next bigger project, right? That's the way we transform. Well said. Well, let's just kind of close today out. Uh, we always end on time. You've got links to all of the recent town hall series. Uh, leverage those. Here's a deeper dive into that spend management category. Um, and, you know, we've got deeper dives into everything we discussed today. Um, next Thursday, we'll be back with a, a standard AICPA town hall format where we'll be giving you the DC update, technical updates. We're also going to be talking about uh, CP evolution, and we're going to have a discussion uh, with the PCC chair, Candy Wright. So uh, definitely a town hall not to miss. So great being with you today with this special edition technology-based uh, town hall. Look forward to being with you uh, again on October 6th. I want to thank my two friends and two people who are really giving all they've got for the profession, Tom Hood and Jim Thanks. Borg. Thanks. Great being thank with you. you. Thank you. Great being here. Be safe out there, all of you. Thanks. Yes. Thank you for your participation. You can now subscribe to the AICPA Town Hall Series on your favorite podcast platform as well as watch archives on YouTube and AICPA TV. Tune in for live broadcasts Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time.